I'm speaking with Dr. John Nelson. John is the head of the A.C. Moore Herbarium at the University of South Carolina and is teaching a spring flora class and let us come with him on his field trip to Sesqui Centennial State Park very near Columbia. John, why do you like to bring kids to this place to look at plants? Well, Amanda, this place, one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, it's got all sorts of different plant communities to uh, study, and it's very easy to access all of them once, once we get here into the park. I think when I came with you many years ago as a student, the thing that I was most impressed with was we learned about the, um, the longleaf pine community. Is that represented here? Oh, very well. Uh, the longleaf pine, though, of course, is dominating the hills that more or less surround the recreational area down here where the lake is. And of course, the longleaf pines have a very characteristic flora uh, where they do exist, uh, including a lot of um, turkey oak and blackjack oak, which we went through once we were um, on the entrance road. But then here. we came down kind of quickly and we got to this right. low area where we had a nice picnic and it's, there's a lot more water down here. Uh, there's plenty of water. In fact, um, lots of drainage from the uh, surrounding hills. Then there's this creek that flows into the pond behind us. And of course, the pond is, it's, it only exists because there's a dam that they built and now it's full up with water. But all of this water down here does make a lot of difference in the kind of uh, plants that will grow in this part of the park. Well, I'm going to tag along with some of your students and meet some of them and ask them to tell me if they know what plants they're looking at and why they enjoy learning about them. Well, I hope they're learning some plants. Samantha Quattlebaum is in the spring flora class. Samantha, tell me why you decided to take a botany class. All right, I decided to take this botany class because I heard it's the only class at the university where you get to take regular field trips. And I've studied molecular bi plant biology, but I wasn't able to tell you names of trees. So I just, I needed to know so that uh, people really thought I was a plant biologist. And this below us is a plant that you've learned today so tell me what the name is and a little bit about this plant please. Okay uh, well the common name is thistle um, but the scientific name that we learned today is Circium horridulum. wanted to make sure I got it right um, but it's in the sunflower family which is the Asteraceae and um, the top here this beautiful burgundy um, those are all flowers and they're disc flowers which means that they have radial symmetry. So wherever you cut it, you're gonna get the same for both sides. You told me that you knew a little bit about this plant from growing up. Tell us about yes. your ex first exposure to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on a farm and we had some cows. Um, they don't like this plant too much uh, because it has a lot of, um, has a lot of pointy parts, pretty uh, horridulum, pretty horrible. But um, th these plants were always on the outside of the pastures. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chris Walk is in the spring flora class, and he's with us at Sesqui. Chris, what is this tree that we're standing by? This is a Magnolia grandiflora. It's a native tree to South Carolina. And does it have a common name? It does. It's a magnolia tree. <laughs> it gets big, beautiful white flowers on it, and it smells wonderful. One of the things, it's got beautiful evergreen leaves, and I believe sometimes you look under the 
bottom of the leaf to see if it has any hairs or tomentos or something. What do you call that? Yes, ma'am. There are um, some hairs on certain species. This particular species doesn't have as much as the cultivated version, which would have the rust-colored uh, hairs on the, on the bottom aspect of the leaf. And we thought it had flower buds on it, but when we dissected it, what did we find out? They were actually a bunch of brand new baby leaves rolled up like a cigar that are getting ready to open up. Well, it's going to be a mighty pretty tree, and it's going to live here in Sesquipe for a long time. Thanks for telling us about it. Okay, thank you. John, it interested me that well, I came through a lot of traffic to get out here, and as soon as I do get out of the car, here we're at a space that is very, very rural and, and, and untouched. A great place to get away right in the city. You know, Amanda, that's a very true statement, and I think this is one of the most special places in the Midlands. This state park I've been coming to as a kid, and I've always thought that it was way out in the middle of nowhere. It really was when I was a, a little teeny tiny, but of course now it's just sort of almost in the heart of the suburbs. But you are right that it is a, um, an oasis of natural history um, in a very urbanized environment. I think anybody could come and find something to do with kids and for people who are interested in the plant community, it's remarkable. And if you're interested in wildlife, we've got a lake so you know you're going to have a lot of bird species. Oh, yeah. Canada this, geese. Well, but a lot of other things too. This oh, is sure. a very and not only that, but um, all different kinds of animals. So you know, our class we we picked up a little frog and I held it for them. Yeah, but um, you but right, you don't have to go far from Columbia. Right. I, I'm, I think we really need to say thank yeah. you to the state park system. I think so for I think having that this. The state parks have done such a great job all over the state in their various um, parks and saving. Um, really good examples of the local landscape and the uh, uh, critters and plants that live in them. Um, glad somebody had the foresight to do it. Well, I'm glad that um, somebody did. <laughs>